All right, so hello everyone, welcome to today's video. And in this tutorial, I will be showing you how to fix the particles that are not moving, which is normally affected by a smoke seam. And um, uh, you can see that some of the particles that are completely, completely static after some frames. And if I were to template this color and select this smoke seam, you can see that um, the particles are outside of the smoke seam. So they don't have any information of the density or the velocity. So they just become static all the time. So this is, uh, this is what we try to achieve today. So we are going to build a system to force the particle move with the smoke seam. And um, uh, just so you know, uh, the difference between uh, this regular pop seam and this pop seam, uh, it's just a, I just add a pop vault inside. And um, we are going to build this one from scratch. So don't worry. And yeah, let's jump right into the tutorial. So let's create this setup from scratch, except for the smoke, because it's quite simple. So let's get to see this one and get to it right here. And firstly, I just use a sphere, and then I fed it into the axiom source shape. And inside this, I just use a directional force, and with a magnitude of 16, and I added some velocity noise, and then plug it into the ASIM solver and inside this I just use some turbulence and uh, dissipation those tur turbulence will make the uh, smoke become more interesting and then I just catch it um, just so you know I just uh, you can use the pyro solver but in my case I just use the ASIM solver so, so that it can speed up my tutorial and yeah I just catch it and uh, it doesn't appear anything right now because it conflicts with the name. So let's remove this one and let's cancel axis and paste it right here. So this is our smoke simulation so far. So let's create our particle simulation. Is it enough? Let's create a scatter and scatter some point onto the surface of the sphere. And then I will get rid of this relax iteration and increase the force total count to 5000. And then I will use a pop network. And inside this, I use the, uh, uh, or rather, I change the emission type to own points. And everything else, I think, is default. Yeah. So let's use a pop avec by volumes. So that the particle can inherit the motion of the uh, of the smoke, and let's set the source to second contact and update velocity, and set the plan to one so they can move exactly to the motion of the smoke. All right, so let's use this color right here so that we can easily visualize it. Okay. So you can see the problem right here. Some of the particles, they are not moving at all. So there are some reasons I'm causing this uh, issue. The first reason is that the particle inherit the velocity of the smoke, but the velocity is too high. So they will be swept out the region of the smoke. And the second reason would be that the smoke uh, is, not is not thick enough. So the particle cannot carry with the motion of the smoke. So in the past, I used to um, fix this problem by using the velocity of the particle. So let's do it right here. So I use the uh, speed of the particle. So let's now define the speed by using a variable and use the length of the particle. So if the speed of the particle less than some threshold, if speed less than some threshold, which, me which means that they are not moving, so then we can remove all of those points. All right, so let's promote the parameter. Set the threshold to 0 0.5 or 0 0.1, okay. So you can see it right here. So it's kind of fix a problem, but you can see that the particle is kind of appear 
sorry, disappear suddenly. And it's not smooth at all. And you can fix this problem by increasing the, um, the number of the particle to like 4000 or so. So that, um, and you can use um, some more similar and even some 2D more similar in COM so that we cannot really easily notice uh, those ECU particles. Um, uh, but uh, in some cases, we want the particle to like morph into another object, or we want to retime the particles, uh, especially uh, at the beginning when the particle first born, so that we can have like a small transition. Um, so that we need to come up with another solution. So let's see how we can fix it. Alright, so this here is a sketch of what we see in the viewport. So you can see the blue particle right here. Uh, they are the one moving with the smoke. So they are completely fine. However, the red particles, uh, they are the one outside of the smoke. So they do not inherit any motion from the smoke anymore. So we need to uh, fix this. And my solution for that is um, firstly, we need to define between the red particles and the blue particle, which can be easily done by the speed triangle that we did before. So basically, we just need to um, um, take the speed value of each point and compare it with some uh, threshold. And um, when the speed is less than some threshold, uh, we can define it as the red particles. Uh, and once we have that, we need to somehow help the particle to uh, travel back to the smoke by create a vector like this. And um, in order to create the vector, we need to utilize the normal vector of the smoke. Uh, but um, uh, but the thing is that um, the volume of the smoke doesn't have any vector. Uh, so we need to convert the smoke into a regular geometry. So it has the normal vector pointing outward from the surface like this. And from that, we just need to take the point and uh, sample the closest point onto the, on the surface of the smoke. And then wrap the normal and transfer it back to the point. And then um, obviously the, the vector right here is pointing the wrong direction. So we need to negate it back so it can have the, vet, the vector that point back to the volume like this. And then once we have that, we need to just need to take the current velocity of the particles and add the vector back. So we can have the all of the particle, uh, red particle, travel back to the smoke and become the blue particles. And let's see how we can do this in Houdini. All right, so let's get back to Houdini. And I think for now, we should have to copy this partner and paste it to the side so we can have two versions so we can easily compare it. And um, uh, for now we have, yeah, let's copy this uh, file cache so we can see um, the result in real time. So let's paste it right here. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's catch this one. Save to disk. Yep, so we can see uh, the pop sim in real time. So for this problem, uh, let's handle the problem. So first, uh, first of all, let's um get rid of this pop angle, and we will create this um line of code in uh, the pop box, so we can have more control. So let's use a pop box, and uh, first thing first, let's isolate between the uh, red and the blue particle like the scan that I showed you before. So let's use a LAN, connect to the V, and compare it with uh, a transform. So for example, um, the threshold is less than, uh, sorry, the value is less than 0.1, for example, and we can use like flow to vector to decide the, um, the color of the particles. So for the red, um, we need to set the current one to uh, to one, and for the blue, 
we need uh, another float to vector and set the component tree to one. So this is like the red, uh, red, green, and blue, uh, or basically the RGB of the uh, color. So we need like the two-way switch to switch between the color. So if the condition two, which means that if the velocity land less than the point one, we need uh, to use the input one, which is the red color, and if not, we use the blue color, and let's set it to CD. So we can see the result right here. Yep. So you can see that the red particles are the ones that you know um, don't have any motion. So let's get back to level to uh, zero one, and uh, from this volume. Uh, we can create the zero mesh version from it, and now uh, to do that, we need to use the convert PDB, convert PDB, and um, and now uh, convert to PDB. And uh, actually, you can convert now uh, right away to the polygons, but I want to use some um, further operation like PDB smooth, so I think it's better to convert it to a SDF. And then from the SDFs, we can convert it to the, uh, to the actual mass. So let's convert Fox to SDF. So this is a SDF version from it. And um, we can use the VTB smooth uh, to make the mass um, you know, smoother. Uh, the for iteration is OK. And let's um, reduce the Fox ISO value. Yep. So from this um from this LDS we can convert it back to the uh geo version of it and convert it to polygons. So this is the polygon version of the smoke sim. And uh we can utilize the normal from it. So let's use the normal song and uh change the I don't want to vertice because right now uh, this is the vertice normal and we want the point uh, version from it. Uh, yeah. So let's create a node here and we can name it to our normal. And from it, we can plug it to the input tree. And inside this format, um, Let's dive into the pop up and make some room so we can have more node. Um, so let's see. So to grab the normal uh, vector from the geometry, we need to use the PC import. Sorry, the PC open to um, sample the closest um, uh, point from it. And so let's use the PC open. And the PC open expect a file. So we need to um, uh, specify the input from it. Uh, so from the pop up, we need to use the input. And the input we want is the third context geometry. So yeah, I should use the input tree for consistency. Third, in, third context geometry, uh, which means that now the third input will be plugged it right here. So let's dive inside. And um, for the file, let's connect to the op input tree. And let's use the P uh, from the particles, and we want to filter the the normal from it. And um, to visualize, let's connect the uh, PC filter uh, to the normal. Yep. So let's now replay it, and let's have a look at the third radius. And uh, for this uh, value. I think you have to manually add it yourself because sometimes in your um in your pop sim, uh, the particles are way outside, so they don't receive any normal vector from the mass. So in my case, you can spot some particles right here. They don't have any like vector uh, for it. So we need to increase the search radius to like 0.5 or even one for safety, and let's normalize this vector so they only have the one unit length. And then you can notice that the uh, all of the vectors are having the wrong direction, so we need to negate that. So all of the uh, vector will pointing to the smoke. 
and then um, we need to add the customized vector to the uh, to the current velocity and let's output the velocity and we can uh, remove this all right so let's play again so right now you can see that the behavior of the particles is a little bit weird uh, it's because all of the particles are affected by the this operation so we only want the red particles to be affected so we can just use a multiply and um, the second input we need to plug into the compare so basically the operation is only um, work uh, when the when this condition is true so let's play it again yeah, so you can see that we can fix the problem right here. And uh, let's get outside and let's catch it. And from this stage, you can do even more operation on the pop valve. So for example, let's dive inside. And as you can see right here, all of the battles are having the um, one unit length. So you can uh, make it to have more variation. So let's random on the ID. And this random is outputting the 0 to 1 value. So let's fit it because we don't want the uh, vector to have the 0 value. So let's fit it from 0 to 1 to 0.5 to 1. And let's multiply it. So we can have more uh, variation on our customized vector. And you can even uh, make this transition smoother by using um, the fit strand. So instead of using this compare, uh, Let's disconnect it and use the fit range and let's fit it from 0 to 0 0.5 uh, to 1 to 0. So basically, when the speed value less than 0.5 is starting to begin this um uh, this effect. So let's connect the fit to the multiply and you can do even a multiplier on the whole effect. Uh, so basically, you want the uh, this effect to happen faster. So you can do a multiply constant and um, so for instance you want to speed up the whole effect by 2 so just type 2 here so you can have the particle sucking into the volume even faster uh, but in my case I think um, 1 is working fine for me so let's get rid of it and um, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, for the convert VDB you don't want to set the fog ISO value to really high um, so let's set it to 0.9 and especially turn off the VDB smooth and you can see it here it will result in a lot of you know details uh, and um, this uh, separate chunk and uh, the particle might suck into this chunk instead of the volume so we want the particles will travel into the volume not this separate chunk so yeah let's undo this thing and send it back to point one. So basically, this is the thing that I want to share with you today. And if you have any question, feel free to comment down below and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.